Hi, and welcome to the second set of notes. This is on meiosis, reduction division, and genetic recombination. Um, so meiosis is really the fo um, is a form of cell division by which gametes uh, with half the number of chromosomes are produced. So a normal uh, body cell uh, would be a 2N, would be a diploid structure, and meiosis would turn that into a haploid or an N, and that's what a gamete is. It's that haploid uh, cell. Meiosis is part of sexual reproduction, and meiosis has two divisions, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So in meiosis, sex cells divide to produce gametes, and those gametes are sperm or egg. Um, the gametes have half the number of chromosomes. Uh, they occur in specialized uh, sex cells called gonads, testes in men, ovaries in females. Um, and with males, there's a process called spermatogenesis, sperm formation. With females, it's oogenesis, uh, which is egg formation. Um, so here, spermatogenesis uh, using chromosome numbers, so the diploid number for a human is 46. Uh, after meiosis 1, the number is now haploid. It's now 23 chromosomes, and then a further division produces four haploid sperm cells um, in meiosis 2. Uh, with oogenesis, it's a little different. Um, we start with 46 with the regular body cell number. Meiosis 1 produces 23, and meiosis 2 also produces four cells, um, but have a look at the difference. The polar bodies, um, they are uh, not going to make it. They die, and you're left with one haploid egg. So to go over and start looking at the phases of meiosis, uh, we start with interphase, interphase 1. Um, it's, it's obviously similar to interphase in mitosis. Uh, during interphase of meiosis, chromosomes replicate. Uh, they do that in the S phase. Um, now we have duplicated chromosomes consisting of two identical sister chromatids. Those are attached on the centromeres. Um, now the central pairs also replicate. So here's a single-stranded chromosome. DNA replication would produce those sister chromatids. Um, so in interphase one, the nucleus and the nucleolus are visible um, within the cell. And meiosis 1 has four phases. Uh, now, during cell division, or meiosis 1 is a cell division that reduces the chromosome number by a half. Um, and those four phases are entitled prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, and telophase 1. During prophase 1, um, it's the longest, most complex phase of meiosis. Uh, the chromosomes will obviously condense, but something different than mitosis. Uh, synapsis occurs, and synapsis is where homologous chromosomes come together, and they come together to form uh, a tetrad, and this is a tetrad uh, right here. Tetrad is two chromosomes uh, or four sister chromatids. So remember, the, the sister chromatids are from DNA replication, and there's also the non-sister chromatids from the homologous set of chromosomes. Um, now, non-sister chromatids uh, are called homologs, and a homologous chromosome contains regions that code for the same genes, uh, and this is just something that you can read later to, to sort of help you understand. Um, if these were all different genes uh, on a chromosome, they may code for the same trait, for example, eye color. However, this chromosome may contain blue eyes and this chromosome may contain brown eyes. The location is, is the important part. The location is the same on a homolog. So in prophase one, we get synapsis occurring, and synapsis is the formation of these tetrads uh, from these homologous chromosomes. Now, a little bit about the homologous chromosomes. Uh, they're parachromosomes. Uh, they're maternal and paternal. So one comes from mom and one came from dad. Uh, they're similar in shape and size. Um, they carry genes controlling the same inherited traits. Um, now, each locus, and, and a locus is a position of a gene. This is a locus right here for, for a single gene. Um, there's another one there and, and so on. Um, it's in the same position on homologs. So if this 
chromosome here uh, had a homologue, this locus would be for the same trait. Now, humans have 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. Uh, the first 22 pairs are autosomes, and then, of course, we have the, the sex chromosomes. So here's another example just showing us homologous chromosomes. Um, this would be a homologous set. We could maybe have a, a locus here for eye color, um, and we could have a locus somewhere else for hair color. One of them is paternal, meaning that it came from our dads, and one of them is maternal, meaning it comes from the mom. So during prophase one of meiosis, we also have crossing over. Um, crossing over occurs between non-sister chromatids, and it occurs at sites called chiasmata. Uh, crossing over is really just those chromatids breaking and reattaching to the other chromatid. Um, so in other words, genetic material is, is exchanged between non-sister chromatids. And this is going to um, look something like this. So if this is our non-sister chromatids, and this is our homologous pair of chromosomes, and this is the chiasmata. Um, during prophase one, they actually will wrap around each other, and this prevents them from breaking apart as they're moving around during meiosis one. Um, but oftentimes what happens is the genetic material can switch. So you see on this one here, the genetic material has switched between those non-sister chromatids, and that's, of course, creating variation, which is very important. And this is another diagram showing uh, synapsis, showing crossing over. You can see that. You can see how that would very easily produce some variation between chromosomes. Um, now, we also have our sex chromosomes. Uh, sex chromosomes, uh, if you're a female, you have two Xs, and if you're a male, you have an X, and then you have this small little Y chromosome. So we're going to go through meiosis 1, and meiosis 1 can be summed up by saying that the hom homologs separate, and, and that's the basis to meiosis 1. So prophase 1, um, a lot of things happen. The nucleus, nucleolus disappear, spindle forms, um, synapsis occurs. We get crossing over happening, and, and that's the basics to pro prophase 1. Uh, it's one of the largest stages. During metaphase 1, um, it's actually the shortest phase of uh, meiosis 1, and the tetrads will align themselves on the equator. Um, now, this occurs, or one of the things that happens is independent assortment. Uh, the chromosomes will separate randomly. So not all of mom chromosomes and all the dad chromosomes are going to line up like you see here. Um, it's going to be done in a random pattern. Uh, and, and that's going to cause some genetic recombination. So chromosome homologs will, will line up randomly on the equator, causing some genetic recombination. Now remember, before that, pro or crossing over happened, producing a little bit more variation. So metaphase one, they line up at the equator um, or the metaphase plate. During anaphase one, they separate. And they separate and they move towards the poles. The sister chromatids remain attached. It's the homologous chromosomes that are separating. So anaphase 1, we get those homologous chromosomes separating. And telophase 1, we now have two cells um, which have a haploid number of chromosomes. Um, a cytokinesis can occur, and the two haploid daughter cells are formed, and that's meiosis 1. There's cytokinesis again. In meiosis 2, meiosis 2 is sister chromatid separating. That's how we could sum up meiosis 2. Meiosis II um, is sometimes preceded by a very short interphase. So sometimes there could be a very short interphase. Most of the time there is no interphase II. Um, there is no DNA replication. And meiosis II is very similar to mitosis. In meiosis II, we start with prophase II. It's the same as prophase in mitosis. Nucleus, nucleolus disappear, chromosomes condense and the spindle forms. Uh, in metaphase 2, the chromosomes line up. Anaphase 2, the sister chromatids separate. And telophase 2, same as telophase in mitosis, uh, except this time we now have four haploid daughter cells, um, and they're called gametes. Um, and they will eventually mature into uh, eggs and sperm. And this is a uh, 
a diagram showing a sperm cell penetrating an egg. Um, both of them are haploid to form a diploid zygote. So there's telophase 2 there showing us those four haploid uh, cells. Um, we should talk a little bit about variation at this point. Um, variation can be also called genetic recombination. Uh, it's important uh, for populations. It's important to natural selection. Uh, it's important because not all, not all organisms will be alike, and it will allow for the strongest to survive and reproduce and pass on their traits, which is the basis to evolution. Um, so a question that I may ask you on a quiz are what three sources of genetic recombination or variation can we see um, in meiosis? And the answer, of course, is crossing over, which is done in prophase one. Um, independent assortment, remember those homologs lining up randomly, that's done in metaphase one. And finally, random fertilization. There, there's really no way to predict which sperm is going to reach the egg. And so fertilization is, is random, which allows for uh, variation in, in species. Uh, the very last thing to talk about are karyotypes, and you have a project which you will do karyotypes. And karyotypes are really just a picture a picture showing chromosomes um, arranged in pairs by size from smallest to the largest and they're typically numbered that way too, 1 to 22 and then we have the last pair being the sex chromosome. So this is a male karyotype, you can see because it's got an X and a Y. Um, the female karyotype looks very similar except there are two X's and this is something you will do in your genetic disorders projects. Um, you will actually be able to uh, be creating karyotypes, except your karyotypes will have something wrong with them and you'll have to figure out what sort of disease that is. Um, so that's the set of notes on, on meiosis.